right, man. Welcome back to the Geek Set Podcast, the only podcast that blends hip hop culture and geek culture together. I'm your boy Deuces in the building, and this is One on One with Deuces, the place where I speak to creators, content creators, and people that you should know. And right now, man, I am truly, truly excited. For those who have been listening to the podcast, y'all know how much I love The Flash. Y'all know how much I love the show. And I am speaking with somebody who is now a main cast member, but I'm speaking with the one and only Brandon McKnight. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing good, brother. Thank you so much for having me on. So I ask everybody, man, how has COVID been treating you, man? COVID, uh, you know, it's funny. I've, 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 I've talked about this a lot with a lot of other people. And I feel like whenever I think about COVID and the whole quarantine thing, I feel like I'm coming kind of from a, from a privileged position because I know there's a lot of people going through it. Right. And I'm privileged in the sense that before the lockdown happened, I had finished shooting, I think it was like three episodes okay. um, before everything shut down. So I had a little bit of money in my pocket. And as well, I'm just, I'm an introvert. I'm as introverted as introverts get. So somebody told me, oh, we got to stay inside. You can't see or talk to nobody. I was like, this is a dream. This is, this is, this is a fantasy. I'm, I'm with this. I'm cool. So, <laughs> so it's been, it's been, it's been, there's a lot of self-awareness that I've gained during this time. A lot of, uh, I started meditating on a regular. It's become a very big part of my life. Um, it's just a lot of growth, a lot of internal growth. It's the type of growth that I really love. Um, and just like, even, even like experiencing my family in a different way and, and how you talk to people is different. Creating connections without actually being in the same room as people. That is a skill that we've all built because a year ago, me hopping on a zoom with you, that would seem like inconvenient watching the news and seeing two people not like actually interviewing each other, being in the same room. That'd be weird. Like, why aren't they there? But now it's just such a regular thing. So I feel like the way we've had to communicate and stuff like that has had to change. And I've noticed myself being an introvert, being a lot more open mm -hmm. to communicating with people in this way. Yep. And uh, yeah, yeah, just a lot of growth, a lot of growth, man, in the best way. That's dope that you like dove into meditation because you got to think about it. It's like with this being such a, a change in so much, like you need that space where you can kind of decompress and things like that. Yeah, man. As black men, we don't necessarily do that. Like we are nah. so, we are so inclined to be the strong person and deal with our own stuff on our own that we don't take yeah. the time to, to check into that. So that's really dope that you dove into. Yeah, that. yeah, and that's something that I've like I've had that same thought. And you had one of my brothers on the show not too long ago, Lavelle Adams Gray. Yeah. And one thing we always talk about is how important it is as black men to learn these spiritual practices and to actually practice them because, you know, I mean, we don't have to go through it. You already know the amount of years that we've been going through what we're going through at this point, that stuff is in our bone marrow, yeah. the traumas and the, and the, and the anger and the, and then we still got to watch TV and watch the news and see somebody that looked like us bleeding out on the street or getting choked out on the street. Right. So to deal with those things, it's not just about expressing yourself and, and doing what you can for the cause. It's also about taking care of yourself internally yep. because what better way to break somebody down if they have no strong foundation inside of themselves, yep. you feel me? So um, uh, meditation, um, I'm, I'm creating a better relationship with God. Um, you know, just doing all the things that, that, that one should be doing to you know, keep yourself in check mentally and spiritually and emotionally, especially emotionally, because yeah. that's where a lot of bad stuff happens. Yeah. That's where a lot of it is rooted from. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, the meditation has really, really helped me and saved me. Now, speaking of Lavelle, um, yeah, do y'all guys got like a, a secret like young black actor? Because like, like, <laughs> because low key when I when I like when I posted his and then I yeah. posted that I was doing yours. And then it was just like, I was like, wait, who are these black actors? And I started looking at like looking at everybody <laughs> that was like reposting it, reposting. And I was like, yo, I want to talk to all of these people. <laughs> I, was like, hey, I was gonna I was gonna tell you, look, you talked to Lavelle, you talked to me today. There's good. five more of us because we started a little production company called BDB, Big Big Dreamers Brotherhood. Is that, and that so I was is that that picture with all of y'all? Yeah, that's that picture with all of us. Okay. So you went through Lavelle, you went through me, you got five more interviews you got to do. And then you got <laughs> After I start seeing this as a part, and I was, because you know me, I'm I'm inclined to try to figure out who these people are, because I'm like, yeah, everybody yeah. has a story. 
So I started, yeah. I was like, well, who's this person? I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> person. I'm like, oh, I want to talk to him. Okay, I want to. Yeah, talk man. To so yeah, like, man. Those hey, are my brothers. Brothers for life, know. man. Let them know I'm looking for them. Let them. I'll tell. I'll, I'll text them right now. I'll be like, expect <laughs> an interview. Yeah, let them know, man, because I want to get yeah. into it, man. Um, yeah. So I th- on this platform, I'm big about giving people their flowers, right? So my introduction to you, just in general, um, was the Flash. You know. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that the role was so, it was like, it was one of those, it was meta, but it was dope because it was like Chester's P. Runk, this take of him, you know, mm-hmm. like um, doing like the video, you know, so it's kind of like, like yeah, yeah. YouTube, you know, aspect, doing the video. Yeah, yeah, Twitch kind of thing. Twitch yeah. type of thing. Um, and I thought that was so dope, but it's like in this world, in this space of being a black just hero, character in general, just in general, yeah. it's like it's really dope to have that, um, that representation in there and things like that. So um, we'll start off with the flash with you. Like when you got that flash, like that role, that call, that audition to go into that flash, what was your preparation to that role? It's funny. Like I remember I still have the the self tape on my, on my computer. I got that through a tape. So I just sent in a tape and I found out maybe like three, four weeks later, and the preparation, like when I read it, here's the thing. First, before I even answer this question, let me just give you a shout out because I think your show is brilliant for what you guys are doing and and mating the whole geek culture and hip hop culture together as like what you say in your intro and stuff like that. These are two cultures that early on when I was growing up, they were separate. You know what I mean? You couldn't be cool and hip hop and also a geek. You know what I mean? You, 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 you're, you're cool and hip hop at school and then you go home and you watch your anime. Right. In secret and you don't talk about it you know what i mean so kudos to you for doing that yeah. and that's kind of how i felt when i read chester i was like oh here's this here's this young black man who and he's a grown man Chester's 28 29 you know what i mean he's a grown man who who is as nerdy as nerd can be brilliant absolutely brilliant able to make you able to do the things NASA does in his garage right. with junk. Um, socially awkward. Now he doesn't have the things that you traditionally paint a black man with the strength and the and the vibrato and you know all those things. And I think it's such a blessing to see that on screen. So also I got to shout out Eric Wallace for taking that character from the t- from the comic books and then shifting him to what he shifted him into being for the show. Um, because it's just a brilliant thing. He's just this adorable kid. He's like a fan of the show who's on the show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and you don't really get to see those qualities in a lot of Black men on screen. So it's a privilege and an honor to be able to play that. And I'm very much so like that. I'm a, I'm, I'm a big geek. Yeah. You know what I mean? I watch anime. I play the video games. But I also listen to hip-hop and jazz. And I'm also cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when I think about Chester, I just think this, this, this is such a blessing to get to play somebody like this, who can really just be a child yeah. having fun and in love with everything. Even the, even the bad things, he has no social awareness. So yeah. even like villains and stuff like that, he's like, Oh, Oh, this villain. Oh wait, shoot. He's a villain. I got to remember I'm part of the team. Now, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, it's funny so, when he, uh, when, when they first, when they first uh, captured him and then like he, we had the black hole in it. So he did his YouTube intro. He's like, hey, but where am I at? Like, wait, wait, yeah, wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, when yeah. He, then when he got to go around Star Labs, like he was fanboying out. He was like, oh, yeah. it's the That's thing. That's exactly yeah. what it is. I would be too. That's exactly right. what I'd be doing. <laughs> you know, the Flash, in, in, in that world, the Flash has been going, like he's been doing his thing for a while. So you've seen it. So to yeah. get put into that world and be a part of that exactly. team. Like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, like, and as an actor, that's what I felt like coming onto the show too, because the Flash is mine and my little sister's favorite superhero. Like she, my, she, she more than me. She got like Flash tattoos and her favorite <laughs> colors. Like she, she's with, you go into her room, there's Flash posters all over the place. So we used to watch the show early on. And um, when I, I remember I had auditioned for a few of the CW superhero shows, a few of the DC shows. I think I auditioned for Arrow as well. I also think I went out for DC Legends. Um, so like we were we were about that whole universe. We knew right. about all this stuff. So when I got the audition, there was that fanboy moment where I was like, oh my God, this like this is the flash. I gotta get this. You know what I mean? So like in preparing for all that stuff, um, um, a lot of the fandom and a lot of like the energy that they wanted Chester to have, 
just came out of me being excited to like watch the show or be on the show and audition for the show and and all that kind of stuff. Oh, sorry. sorry. Got a little dry throat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what I hope they get they get to do for you because one of the things that I love about the show is when they kind of like they poke fun at some of the things that the comics used to do. So with yeah. the whole multiverse and everything, I do hope you get the Dawn of Faxon. Uh, so I, I, I've been pitching that. I've been pitching that <laughs> since I got on. Like <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Chester be a little bad at some point. I want to see well, not bad, but you know you know what his story in the comic is. A little conflicted. I want to see him uh, uh, don a fat suit at some point. Yeah. I think in the comic books, he's like 800 pounds or 700 pounds or something like that. That would be a lot of fun to play. <laughs> uh, we do got some fan questions. because Oh, amazing. Because, like, and that was the one of the things. I was like, you know what? I do need to make sure that I get the fandom a part of this. Because I was yeah, like, this, this is one of those ones where it's like, I cannot not include them. Because, <laughs> you know, and, 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 bro, when, 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 I, when I posted it up, like, the one... The Flash fan base is amazing. They went crazy. They're they're dedicated. They are amazing, and it's just funny dedicated with capital letters. Right, and it's funny because I'm technically a part of it, but I was I didn't know that much. This is how I knew it. One time, <laughs> somebody had did um, it was like some random post, and it was like it was like Cardi B, but with um with with dresses. So it's like oh no, not dresses. It was like Cardi B with like with 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 fruit. So it was like every color that she wore. They yeah. associated with the fruit. And I was like, I do that. I was like, I could do that for Candace Patton. So I had mm. that. And oh my God, her fan base yep. loved it. And they was like, and yeah. I started, we started getting all this fat this flash accounts following us and, and tagging us and things. It's like, oh, you yep. should Candace, you should do that. I was like, so I I reached out to them. I said, look, I'm gonna be interviewing Brandon, uh, uh, uh Brandon. And they went crazy. They was like, yeah, oh man. my God. Yeah, the fans are dedicated, man. Yeah. It's like some of the most incredible. Like the, I'll just wake up one morning and on my Instagram there'll be like five new photos of people making like these edited. The day they'll take parts from the show and edit them all together and and oh man, the fandom of this show is like crazy and so much love, so much you, excitement with everything. I love it. I know you can't wait till that world opens back up so you can do those comic conventions. Cause trust me, that's the one thing I've been missing. I'm like, this is my first year on the show. I can't go to Comic Con. Comic Con is a dream. It's a dream. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it it's a dream. dream. Um. So uh, one of the first questions they was like, so um, outside of the fandom, what is what your one of your favorite parts of being with the cast in general? It's honestly how down to earth everybody is. I've I've done a few spots and a few other shows, and I mean my 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 career is young. You know what I mean? I've only been really working i i think i went union like three or four years ago i think it was 2016 so four or five years ago um so i've really only been doing this doing this for about five years and i've been on many sets and this is one of the most comfortable sets i've been on um everybody just every from the cast to the crew everybody's just very down to earth very easy to talk to very nice yeah. and you know you got this super successful show that's been going on for seven years they don't have to be you know what I mean? That's one thing I've learned a lot in this industry is that when people get to a certain level of success, they don't necessarily have to be. And sometimes sometimes it's better for a person and what I've been learning, sometimes it's better for a person to not be completely open and because, you know, there's a lot of toxic energy in this industry as well. You know what I mean? So you have to be a little guarded. And that I don't feel any of that on this show. Um, I remember one of my first days, I think it was my first day of the first episode yeah, it, no, it wasn't my first day, but it was first episode where uh, I'm doing the whole Twitch thing. Okay. And I had done that, and this is before I really got to meet anybody. Um, no, this is after I met everybody. But all the throughout the rest of the episode, I was just like in a coma the whole time. So I didn't really work with anybody. I was just there, and then I was like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but the day that I actually got to do my, my, my monologue and stuff like that, I had done it. And then I think I had one more day that was like five days after that. And I came to set and Candace was actually the first person who was like, look, they showed us your monologue, that little thing you did in your garage. That was amazing. That was so good. And she just gave me all these compliments. And everybody that saw me after that had nothing but great things to say. Nobody has to do that. Right. You know what I mean? And that's not something that happens all the time and very often. And then every time I came back, like 
they just included me in everything. It was like joining this family, you know what I mean? And they, they welcomed me with open arms. So that's been the biggest, biggest thing. And it's really allowed me to express what I want to express through Chester, where I want to be a fan of the show. And I want to be a fan of these people on the show, both their characters, but I'm also a fan of who they are as human beings and actors too. So it just, it just benefits the work so much. And then I, I'm honestly blessed, yeah. honestly and truly blessed to have been part of this thing, specifically this thing. What makes it dope is that you are the bar now for that character. You are the first live action True. version of that character. So it's like, no matter, like, with how successful that you have been with it, everybody after is going to be compared to you. And that, to me, mm. that, that's a dope feeling because- um, I didn't even think about that. You blowing my head up now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because like, um, like same thing where like, you know, um, I, one of the people that I got a chance to interview was Jovi and Wade. So he played, mm. uh, you know, Cyborg in Doom yeah. Patrol. And yeah. that was one of the things that I was telling them. I was like, when you think about, like, you have a lot of voice actors who played it, but it was like, when you look at the live action, it was him, it was Ray Fisher. You know, yeah. I, you know, so it was like, you know, like you, like you guys are being that first. That, and it was like, it's dope because you guys are doing it at such a dope level. Yeah, um, yeah. Especially, oh, matter of fact, it, we may be able to get to see you guys together now with that most recent- With everything episode. being connected yeah. now. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, yeah. Anything yeah. is possible now. With that announcement, man, like, like you got to be excited because like it, it, now that means that you could potentially show up in Justice League or whatever the case may be, because now everything has a continuity. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's just, and this is why I love, man. Listen, I'm gonna nerd out right now. Let's nerd out, man. This is this is why I love comics and comic books and all these kinds of stories and what DC is doing and the multiverse and all these things because the sky, the sky isn't the limit. You can go higher. Like the anything can happen and it works and it makes sense yeah. you know what i mean and i love that that little cameo with ezra miller with 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 grant yeah well uh, during the whole yeah. like the, that the, was incredible yeah. that can happen yeah you know what i mean and i love that 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 the world is just so open and yeah. the universe is so open and there's so many different versions of everything i'm i low-key i want to pitch something to to eric wallace about that we were already talking about the fat suit and all that i'm kind of I'm trying to see what other versions of Chester we can, we can throw is, into next season. <laughs> well, because here's the thing: I, t I I've said I've said on my podcast multiple times, Flashpoint is the greatest idea to a, a comic book or a one hundred percent because that opens up the door to unlimited possibilities. You can do something as a one-time run and then be like, "Well, it doesn't mess up this timeline." With anything else? Right, and I think it's that amazing. That, it's so dope. It's so dope for that. And I love that because even with like speaking on DC properties, like how they had Joaquin's Joker. Yep. And now uh, from what I'm hearing, they're doing the whole Snyder cut, which I'm really excited about. Yep. They're doing the whole Snyder cut. Um, and I just saw a picture the other day of Jared Leto's Joker coming back in that movie, making a little cameo. Yeah. So you have these two Jokers in the span of like two years who don't conflict with each other in any way, shape or form. They're completely different universe. We, we can do that. You know what I mean? And there's all these different versions of all the same characters that can be expressed in all these different ways. Because technically we had three Jokers in there. Cause you got, if you think about on Gotham, um, what's the uh, what's his name from uh, Shameless? I can't think of his name. Oh, uh, I know who you're talking about. He played Jerome in, uh, yeah, in Gotham. Uh, yeah, he played. I can't remember his name, but he's amazing, yeah. He, played amazing he slayed that. He, oh my God. He I, slayed I was, that. I was excited about that on Gotham. <laughs> That's the thing, like I said. I, yeah. I, I do believe Gotham is in there too now too, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. It was like that. It's the anything possibilities, man. Like oh, man, I, I love I'm excited it. Excited for that, just to kind of see what they can and can't do, or like well, how, how creative they get. Because like yeah. a lot of DC, their storylines are so dope. I, I'm a DC. My fan favorite. Me. Same, same. Yep. Yeah, I think they have the most interesting characters. I think they have the most interesting villains too. And um, yeah, man, it's just like and seeing. I don't know, man. I feel like I can go on for days about this, but like it's it's we can see different versions of Wolverine. We can see different versions of 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 Batman. We can see different versions of of Chester. We can see different versions of everybody. We're seeing different versions of the Flash. You know what I mean? It's just uh it's there's 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 no limit at yeah. all. Yeah. And it's my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it got be, it got to be a, a amazing feeling to be a part of that. Uh, another yeah. question that they asked um um, so with 
the role expanding, is Chester going to get a love interest? Is Chester going to get a love interest? And will it be with Allegra? <laughs> <laughs> is that some people are, are asking about for real? Apparently so. Oh, that, was, that was a direct question. <laughs> here's, here's what I'll say. Chester, there's going to be a lot of developments for this season for Chester, and I'm really excited for everybody to see it. I've been very excited doing it, and we're not even done yet. I think we're only shooting the 10th episode right now, so we've got quite a few more to go, and just seeing the growth that he's growing through and seeing the developments, not just not just his developments in Star Labs, but his developments as a human being and as a person. You know what I mean? We're gonna learn a lot and I'm still learning a lot about Chester. So um, I'm gonna say to that question, wait and see. Wait and see. <laughs> You're gonna have to watch and watch and see what happens. Saying, but... saying we're not, he's not gonna give up too much about the next season. No, 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 no. I'm trying to keep my job. <laughs> <laughs> you got Tom Holland out, you know. Tom, yeah, yeah. you the one that lets it go. I just read off. Oh yeah, this is him. I should I should read a script to you guys. Let me just read this. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's gonna be a lot of great developments for Chester, and I'm so excited to see how everybody, how everybody, uh, how everybody likes it and enjoys it. I've been enjoying it. So um, yeah, a lot of new stuff. That's what, what I'll, that's what I'll say. A lot of new stuff. What got me excited for the character when they announced that they expanded his role, because it was that that last scene that we did get to see where, where Chester was like, he thought that he messed everything up. So he kind of, yeah. you know, he didn't belong or the flat. And mm -hmm. you know, it was that whole that whole arc, that whole episode. So like that's where you really got like a good sense of who Chester is, because, you know, yeah. to the point it was like, oh, he's just a fanboy. But it was like, no, he wants to do right. But yeah. he's, oh, he's overanalyzing things. He's yeah. doing things that he thinks is messing up. So, like, you, by the end of that episode, you get, oh, he, he what his purpose is, and you, he's a value member. And it's just like, yeah. oh, I want to see this now. I want to see more of this because it's yeah, like, yeah, that was a, a pivotal moment in that character arc. Absolutely. And there's so many, there's so many conflicts with Chester in that in that moment, and there will be moments in the future as well, where because you know Chester is a pacifist at the end of the day with everything. He doesn't want to want to fight he doesn't want to create violence so especially if he does something that causes more trouble that's something that sits very deeply with him i remember one of the things that uh that eric told me early on with chester is that he's the smartest person in every room he walks in but he doesn't know it and he's the most empathetic person in the room and he doesn't know it you know what i mean so it's always for him he's just excited about life and excited about expressing that but when he does create issues or does create conflict or isn't liked, those right. things really sit very deep with him. So that moment where, you know, that whole Grodd episode where he left because he was like, I caused this. This is my fault. For him to come back and overcome that is a very big thing for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's not something that he's really had to do much in his life, which you guys will come to see what Chester's life is and what his life uh, was and where he comes from and where all of that comes from, where the, where the pacifist side of him comes from and where the excitement of him comes from. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was a big moment. There's more moments like that for Chester, for sure. Oh, for dope. sure. Did I forget the clacker out there? Yeah, the I'm just gonna uh, clap. You have brought it to I know, I'm just gonna clap. I'm yeah, mad, because I was definitely right expecting you to get it. I mean, I could out of me. quickly go grab it. Just hit, just clap. One, <sighs> two, three. All right, 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 man. Welcome back to the Geek Set Podcast, the only podcast that blend hip hop culture and geek culture together. I'm your boy Deuces. I'm your boy Deuces. I'm your boy Deuces in the building. With me, I got my man Liv. What up? It's Liberace. It's the Puerto Rican Santa. The Spicado playing, beat making, motherfucking legendary ass Puerto Rican. So Frito Papi and we back. As always, I got my man Bacardi in the building. Rind off today. We need you, I bitches. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hate all of this. So hard. Hard. I hate all I hate all of this. What's good, everybody? How we doing today? And hey, we got Dig in the building. What is happening, people? What's happening, people? What is happening, people? What is happening, people? It's out the booth. Uh, but it's, it's like I said, we are expanding. We are doing more. So they say make sure you go to youtube.com backslash geekset. 
Follow us on all social media at Geek Set Podcast on every social media. Um, and oh, rate and reviews in, man. We are rating reviewers on Facebook, rating reviewers on Apple iTunes, rating reviewers on Spotify, Google Podcasts, whatever platform you're looking at. Give us some ratings, let us know. Um, and then, again, this is the only podcast that blend hip hop culture and geek culture together. We are out. Peace. Let's switch gears a little bit because mm-hmm. uh, so you did say that like technically you've been doing this for five years. So what got you into acting? Like I couldn't find your your origin story. So what is yeah Brandon? Brandon <laughs> what got you in here? Brandon McKnight's orange origin story. Okay, so I started acting the first time I acted. I should say I was twelve. We did like a little we did like a little uh, play in middle school. Where we did, uh, we called it the Granny Awards instead of the Grammy Awards, and it was basically giving awards to Mother Goose characters, so the three mm-hmm. little pigs and Humpty Dumpty and stuff like that. And I got to play little pig number two, the one with the wooden house. And I remember, this is where this is where I caught the bug. I remember it was me and one of my friends. I don't remember his name. This was grade six or grade seven, I think. I think his name was Hamza or something like that. And we he was little pig number three so he was the smart one with the with brick house and all that and we decided me and him were dancers i used to dance a lot back in the day break dance and all that and he was like let's let's like like moonwalk out on stage and this was in front of the whole school and everything like that and i was like you really want to do that yeah let's do that so then we moonwalked out that was our entrance to accept our reward for like i think we were being rewarded for like engineering or something like that being able to be pigs and build a house out of wood and brick and um, uh, and uh, yeah, I remember we moonwalked out and then we were just having a ball. We were kind of improv the whole thing. And we were like 11, 12 years old. We were improv the whole thing. And everybody laughed. And that laughter, I don't know, there's something about hearing an entire room of people laugh at something that you did because they enjoyed, not because they're laughing at you, but because they actually enjoy what you did. Mm-hmm that that messed me up in the best way i was like what is this yeah. i need to do this all the time and i remember we got an encore for that performance and like people were bringing their parents to come watch and i was like this is the most amazing thing i've ever done it didn't click to me at that point that this was like a job and like i could chase this as a career um we did another play in grade eight same sort of reaction we did a grease but like a modernized version it was actually ahead of its time because it was like a full black cast that we did for this for this play. This was like two thousand and like one, I think. I don't even remember what it was. Bro, I, I recently, <laughs> uh, Paige Kennedy. He's a Shakespearean actor. Like he's Shakespearean yeah. trained, but he does like yeah. you know he does social media videos and stuff like that. All those funny videos. He's and, hilarious. But I told him, I said, bro, if you was to take what you do and did like an all black cast, I think that that like if you did like an all black Game of Thrones and took it serious. It could revolutionary is what it would be. <laughs> yeah, out of this world, especially right now. I'm looking for that. I want that. You know what I mean? So basically, uh, after grade eight and doing that play, I think I took drama in high school a couple of times, but I was a very insecure kid in high school. And I kind of just did. I was lucky enough to be associated with cool people. <laughs> I wasn't cool. I was just associated with cool people. And the cool thing to do was play ball. So, you know, I kind of dished the whole artistic side of who I was and just made it about sports. And I got good, but I just, it, it wasn't me. And then I, after high school, I started working as a mechanic. Every man in my family kind of worked in a garage. So I kind of just followed suit with that. My dad was a transmission tech. Um, my, my stepdad worked in factories and stuff like that. So I kind of just took that up and I was a mechanic for about like eight, 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 nine years collectively. And early on, I realized very, very early on, actually, I realized this is not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life at all. Same thing. I was good at it, but it just, it, what, it didn't serve me. It didn't do anything for the spirit. So I kind of, I literally woke up one day and was like, you know, I've always been thinking about this acting thing. I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna just figure this out. However, I gotta figure it out. This is, it's the first time in my life I think I ever made a real decision for myself. I think I was like 21, 22. I had no idea what the industry was, didn't know anything. I remember I joined my first agency. I found them on Craigslist. 
<laughs> and they charged me money I didn't have to get headshots and you know one of those scam I I had to figure out so many things and I made so many mistakes. I any, yeah, I guess so. Everybody <laughs> where like you paid something and then when you look back at it like why did I pay that? why did I pay that? I did, how did I even come up with the money to pay for right. that back then? Like <laughs> Yeah, and I just I just figured it out from there, and you know I started to. At first, it was just learning what the industry was and learning how do I get an audition, how do I meet casting directors, what is a casting director, you know what I mean, and then. Soon after, it became about the craft and like, oh, this is more than just like, being on camera and and blah 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 blah. There's a whole craft behind this. This is a this is, this is this is no different from being you know, a, a doctor where you got to go and you got to train and you got to learn and you got to practice and you, it, it's a daily thing. And it's not just about learning my lines and learning how to be a different kid. There's so much of it is about me yeah. and my, the things in my life that I resist and I don't want to recognize about myself. Cause one thing a coach, one of my acting coaches always taught me, she only said it once, but it stuck with me for a very long time is you can't play on camera or on stage, what you don't play in your real life. You know what I mean? You're not going to be able to just cry and break down on stage if you don't let yourself do that in real life. You know what I mean? And I fell in love with that part of it. And that was, you know, and that was part of the self growth thing that has, that came to what this year was when I was going back to me talking about meditation and self growth. That like, oh, I fell in love with that part of it more than I fell in love with the business because it's, I don't know who I would be right now without without acting so it's been a full a full like few decades of this thing developing and changing and me ignoring it and then realizing i kind of want this and then diving full blown into it and now i don't know what i would be without it yeah no, that's that's, that's my acting story that's, dude, that's <laughs> acting origin story but that's dope because you know what so one of the things that i wanted to touch on there's a few points that you made but um yeah so i do music and one of the things that really drove me to music it's similar to what you my mm -hmm. dad he used to do music and one of the first raps that i ever remember he made a rap about dr martin luther king it was the first oh, rap that i learned word. so i used to at every black history program perform it and i remember nice. third grade rapping this song performing yeah it, and the crowd going crazy and again same thing i just fell in love with that not thinking mm -hmm. it's five, not really thinking it was at that point I was just every Black History program. Oh, I know, I got something. My dad does. I got this Black History rap about Martin Luther King. Yeah, yeah. Funny thing about that rap. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize. But... Until, well, I didn't realize it until I was older, and I was like, yeah. "Why did no the teachers or my parents tell me that?" So my dad, <laughs> of course, we know the Martin Luther King story. Yeah. So in the rap, he says, "Some sucker crack cracker try to kill the king, <laughs> put a bullet through the head of Dr. Martin Luther King." So here I am, third grade fourth grade, fifth grade. I'm talking about every year on stage in front of the whole school so rapping this, that some sucker crack trying to kill the kid. <laughs> I'm like, now that I'm older, I'm like, I, I shouldn't have been saying that. that. <laughs> I should not have been saying that. You got all your teachers in school like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody said anything. That's hilarious. It's, it's that the, is hilarious. It's by far the, like, when I think about it, I'm like, man, I was doing this every Black History program. <laughs> And then, you know, you know how it is when you're doing school. Yeah, programs. yeah, yeah. You practice it and practice it and practice yeah. it. So it's like at no at at, not at, at no work, point like, nobody said nothing to you. That's hilarious. Hey man, you probably shouldn't have been saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, that's a bit. I love that. <laughs> but it, it it like like I understand that how you how that stage reaction gets you because that kind oh, of man, it's like electricity. Yeah, it fuels you so much, and then like mm -hmm. when I. Like when I tell, like again, when I look back onto my story, I think about I'm like, man, you know what? Because like I do consider myself an extrovert, you know. But I was like, Word. a lot of that. My dad was in the military, so I, I we moved around a lot. But I was like, a mm. lot of that comes from like those type of moments. I caught that bug being comfortable in front of people because yeah, that it was like I can do this, and it was like it was one of those things that kind of fueled me so much into life. So it was like mm -hmm. that. And then another point that I wanted to touch on that I thought was dope that you brought up was how like you were doing, you were a mechanic for, you said about eight years. A lot yeah. of people get lost in that. And then they think, ah, oh, well, you know what? I mean, I, it's, it's a little bit too late for me to try to chase this dream now. Yeah. And I've been a huge advocate for people telling like, fam, chase your dream. Like, I don't, chase that. 
don't let nobody put their timetable onto you. you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah, for sure. I, I feel like I feel like I was blessed with a little bit of I can never say this word naivete. I was naive mm -hmm. and I was blessed with a certain level of stupidity in a way where I never listened to anybody. Um, and I don't contribute that to me being smart or me being, you know, a go getter or anything. I was just, I just didn't, I just didn't, it's not even a matter of didn't compute it. I was, to me, it was like, this is what I want to do. So I, I have to do it. You know what I mean? There were so many days where people would tell me that, where they would be like, bro, like acting, that's something you got to start when you're young. That's something you, you have this full-time job, you're doing this. And there's like, okay, between the eight years, there were many times where I quit my job to go work other jobs because I had to go to an audition. And my boss was like, sorry, we can't let you. And I was like, all right, cool, I'm out. Yeah. And I had like no money in my bank account. Really dumb decision, not good life choices. But, and I've done that so many, there's, I remember there's this one job where I worked and I worked there for three days. And I told the manager in the interview, I was like, I'm an actor. So sometimes I have to peace out to go to an audition, but I'll be right back. It only takes about an hour. I was like, okay, yeah, we can accommodate that sometimes. And lo and behold, the, the the day I get that job, all of a sudden I have like three or four auditions in the span of like two days, which rarely happened for me at the time. And it started to become a problem. Three days into that job, I was like, if you're not going to let me go, I'm sorry, I got to go. You know what I mean? I've done that so many times. Not good choices. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, if you really want to do something, you got to do it. And on top of that, I had the reminder every day that I was at work, how much I didn't want to be there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I guess I'm just lucky enough to be perceptive enough to how I feel inside to have made those decisions because I really don't like sitting in a spot that don't sit right with my spirit. <laughs> they don't sit right with my soul. I just, I know it's not for me. So um, and at the time I didn't recognize it as that, but, uh, yeah, yeah. That's something that a lot of people told me growing up or going through this whole thing is like, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Like it's family as well. And that's the hardest thing when family's telling you that stuff. And, you know, I come from a very blue collar rural Jamaican family where it's, you know, it's God and work. Yeah. You know what I mean? You God and work, you go to church, you go to work, you come home, take care of the family, you go to bed, you do it all over again. And so for me to like not have a job at times or for me to chase this thing that that wasn't yeah. concrete or didn't make any sense, you know, it was years before I booked my small, my first little commercial, I got paid a hundred dollars for this little commercial that I did. And I was like dancing. It was this little commercial for, uh, they have this festival called Taste of the Dance for it in Toronto. And they had me dancing. And, and it took up until that commercial before my mom was like, okay, <laughs> I see my son on TV. Okay. Yeah. Hey, watch you. I'm calling every hey, Maguire fan TV. And I'm like, my dance fan TV. Go watch you. Go. And all that stuff. That came after she actually saw it. So before that, it was all, no, you need to go find a job. And you need to go do this. And it was every day I was hearing this stuff from work and from family. And it's just, you know, you got to put the earplugs on at some point and kind of just, just, just hustle through it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's funny because, um, that family aspect of it. I think as a creative, everybody goes through that. I told you, like I did music and for the longest, like my parents, they never really necessarily, like they didn't discourage it, but it wasn't like a, like a, like a-, a It wasn't real. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. real. And I remember when it did get real, um, like um, I had put out this album called My Unapologetic Black Thoughts. And it's literally just, I'm a more conscious rapper. So it's literally about like what's going on. Can I find that? I want to hear that. Yeah, definitely, definitely, you can. Where's I, that I, at? On Spotify or? Yeah, it's on. Uh, it's, uh, oh, um, my, my stage name is Young Deuces, but it's called My Unapologetic Black Thoughts. I'm gonna look that up. It was received well, <laughs> and this is where my dad, or the first time that I heard my dad tell somebody that, "Oh yeah, my son, he makes music," and I was like, "Oh, snap. that's a beautiful feeling." Right. And it was, it, what it was is, um, one of the songs I referenced The Rock, and I just remember I was just on Twitter, just you know, saying, and I was like reflecting on that year, the year that I put it out. And I was mm -hmm. like, one of the moments that I did, I, I appreciated it. it was this line. It meant so much to me. And then where I, where it blew my mind, The Rock, not only did he like it and retweet it, he quoted Crazy. the whole bar. So he was like, wait, Crazy. Rock heard my music? 
And then so crazy. And, yeah. And so my dad, when he saw that, it was, you know, my dad, he's a big guy. He like he loved ballers and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. I think that that was the moment that it was like, oh, this is real because yeah, real people are seeing that or hearing seeing it. it. So it was like it was and liking fun. it. And it was like it was different moments. Like even um when I put it out, um, Sway's universe, he reported on it. But when they did their year in of like best albums of the year, they called my album the most zoetic album of that year. And then Ooh. they compared it to Kendrick Lamar's damn album. Ooh. I was like, no, I gotta, I gotta listen yeah. to this now. Hold on, I, I, I'm listening. <laughs> I, I stand by it. Anytime somebody wants to get into my music, this is, I said, this is a good start. This is to let you know who I am as a person. It's a mixture word. of spoken word and that type of music. But it's like, it's one of the things that I, when I do my music, um, this is what I was like, I want to have a story with the album. Like some of my favorite albums, when you yeah. listen to it, it takes you on it. The journey. whole story from yeah. beginning yeah. to end, yeah. So with this album, the journey that I, and which I was skeptical because I was like, I hope people get it because yeah, you know, that, that fight that we're fighting, that we deal with, like it can seem like pure anger. And I was yeah. like, I display that. But I was like, when you listen to the song, it go I mean, when you listen to the album, it goes from anger, then it goes from we need peace to how do we come together. But it also talks about interracial issues. So it talks about you know us condemning people that are fighting for us that are our our own complexion. It talks about that mm-hmm. light skin first dark. It, it talks about all of that. Everything. It was, it was a dope. It was a dope thing for me. So I, I was like, I mean, I hope people get that message and the fact yeah. that I got it. And I was like, oh, this is dope. So it was like, yeah. That's I, amazing, bro. Definitely. And what a co-sign to get. Man. If anybody's going to co-sign anything you do for <laughs> Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh, I call, I, listen, I, I <laughs> that tweet. It's in, it's, in, it's, in, uh, it's, it's in my signature from my email. <laughs> I'm like, like, no, this print it out, put it in your room. This was dope <laughs> That's um, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> How was it? So one of the big things that you did got a chance, you got a chance to be a part of The Shape of Water, which was yeah, yeah, a huge movie. Like, it, like just that whole. That was my first. That was my first real thing. That's the thing that made me like a union actor. Oh, okay. that's where it started for me. Yeah. Yep. I mean, Galero, Del Toro, like, like, yeah. How was it working on that movie? It was amazing, man. Like. That was, like I said, that's my first one. So it was nothing but nerves throughout the whole thing. <laughs> man, I remember, oh, I have so many stories about that. Uh, meeting Octavia Spencer and working with her was, and then seeing the way Michael Shannon, and this is when I, like I was talking about craft before, this is when I really started to discover what the craft was. And then I got this this gig and and seeing the craft at its highest level mm-hmm. being being worked. Like completely, I mean, I feel like that was placed in front of me, and I'm 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 always happy about that. Every time the eve of my first day on that, I was posted on my Instagram or somewhere on my Facebook or something, because that that really changed the game for me. I remember the first day getting to set, and I remember I was lost, didn't know where I was going. I saw these trailers and all these things all over the place, and I had no idea where I was going. And I had, I spoke to like five different people that directed me. I ended up getting to my trailer. I was like, oh my God, I got a trailer. Like, what you mean I got a trailer? Like, this is great. This is mine. My name on the door. This is wild. So I had my trailer, had a couch in there, had like a TV and like it had all a fireplace. I was like, this is some bougie. Okay, cool. (laughs) And then, (laughs) and then I went to the hair and makeup trailer and I'm sitting there and I didn't look around because I'm nervous. I'm just like, where do I go? Okay, I'm good. I got to go sit here. I'm just going to. Sit here, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. They're gonna do my makeup, do my hair. All right, cool. And I hear this voice that I recognize from like the other end of the trailer. I'm like, I know that voice. And I know who's on this movie. And it was Octavia Spencer. And her, where she was doing her hair was like on this little elevated platform in this thing. And I remember just being so nervous. I didn't want to look. I was like, Brandon, play it cool. Act like you've been here before. Don't don't be all fanboy crazy here. And um, Octavia Spencer is one of my mom's favorite actors and I've watched everything she's done. And, you know, it's just, it was, it was crazy. And I like felt her energy on the side of my face. Right. I like knew she was there and I just didn't want to look. And then she came and she walked past me and she tapped me on the shoulder and she was like, Hey, nice to meet you. You playing Dwayne, right? And I was like, yes. She was like, nice to meet you. My name is Octavia. In my mind, I'm like, I know who you are. I'm going <laughs> to introduce it. I know you. 
and she was just so kind. And then that same day, uh, they shuttled us to set, and I got to sit in the car with her. I was in the back, and I was quiet, didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to come off as weird. And we got to set, and we were shooting at uh, the University of Toronto and um, in, like, this little basement area where I think this is what they use for, like, trash and stuff like that, and they had it all cleaned out. And I walk on the set, and I'm like, I'm on a Hollywood set. For, like, this is a Hollywood movie. I'm on a Hollywood set. I'm seeing equipment that I've never seen before. I'm seeing a full crew doing all these things. Everybody's running all over the place. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I walk up these stairs to get to the platform where we're going to be shooting. And Guillermo is at the top of the platform welcoming everybody. This is the first day of shooting as well. And... I'm not expecting to hear anything from him. You know what I mean? I've heard the stories. I was only there. I was supposed to only be there for one day. Um, ended up turning into like eight days on set, which I'll, I'll talk about after. But I walk up the stairs and Guillermo's sitting there and he is the most bright, most down to earth, most hilarious human being I think I've ever met in that position like he is he is he's legendary you know what i mean and he was just so warm and so he just like his arms were so open when i got to the top of the stairs he was like hey i, I i'm gonna butcher his accent i can't right. do it he was like hey brenda oh he gave me like a little slap on the cheek i watched the audition tape it was so good and da, 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 da. Just, I, I sound french he's right. from mexico but you, you get what i'm trying to do <laughs> And he was just saying, he was like, oh, I love your audition. And the swagger you had in the audition tape and da 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 and all this stuff just bigging up my head. And I was like, wow. And he was like, okay, we're going to shoot this thing. And he was telling me the whole scene, what we're going to do. He was like, keep that swagger and keep that da 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 I love what you did in your audition. Let's do more of that today and blah, 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 blah. And it was just so warm and an immediate comfort. I was like, wow. I wasn't, I was expecting it to be like, well, you know, the horror stories that you hear about like Hollywood. And, and it was nothing like that. And, you know, while we were shooting, there was a few breaks in between and Octavia was just so kind. I sat down, I built up the nerves to ask her, like, so, like, how has your process changed in all of this? And, and what's your, what advice would you give to, like, a young person trying to do this? And yeah. she sat down for, like, a good 20 minutes between takes and gave me a whole rundown on and gave me all this advice and life advice, too, about being in this industry and also encouraged me because it's very obvious. It's very normal to walk onto a set like that. If there's any actors that are going to be watching this, it's very, it's very, uh, very. Um, what's the word? It's just it's 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 easy to walk onto set and feel like an imposter, especially when you're working with very people who've been doing this for longer than you've been alive. You know what I mean? And one thing Octavia told me, and it's something I remind myself, it's something I reminded myself when I when I got onto the Flash, is you're here for a reason. You know what I mean? You're not here because you don't deserve it. You're here because you're doing something right. So don't question whether you're doing something right. Don't question whether you're good enough. You know what I mean? Because it's very, it's very, especially with actors, it's very easy to get sucked into this spiral. Any, not even actors, any creative. It's very easy to get sucked into this downward spiral thought of like, maybe I'm not good enough or uh, maybe, maybe, maybe nobody's going to really think, maybe, maybe I got lucky. Or maybe it's because the other person that got the role dropped out and that's why I got it. You know what I mean? You think of all these reasons in your head as to why you don't deserve to be where you're at. And she was like, you got to fight that demon and get that demon out of your head. You don't have to worry about uh, what should you do to get to, to book more. You're already on the right track. And, you know, the fact that you're here, the fact that you're doing what you're doing, the fact that, you know, you sitting beside me as able to ask me these questions is a big thing. And, I really like that, that, that is something that I carry with me. And that's one of my biggest things that I took from that set is just, I'm here for a reason. I tried to carry that energy with me throughout that entire time. And that one day turned into eight days. Guillermo just kept bringing me back and I was able to pay my bills, overdue bills from that, from that movie. So that movie was a blessing. It changed my life for sure. For okay. sure. That, and I said, that's, that's a word, man, what you just said, baby, because it's like, even as a creator, like even doing these interviews, getting to talk to dope people like you, it's like, there's been moments that I'm just like, man, like, you know, like, it's funny. Cause like, I'm like, ah, like when, like with the, even with the zoom, like I'm setting up the zoom. So, you know, I get in, I'm make sure I'm early. I get in. And then it's yeah, all yeah. moment, like, was getting, I'm like, oh, but what if they don't show up? What if they, okay. <laughs> and I'm just like, 
I, I did all the work to get to this point. I was exactly. Like, I, like, but it's like, it's still trying to get comfortable knowing, yeah. that, right? You know, yeah. even the fact, like, like you said, you said, oh man, I watched your work, man. I like what you're doing. I'm just like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, bro. Hey, like, it's like, it's, it's still, it's, it's that moment. Like, I don't expect you to do the research. I expect that I got to do this whole spill. Let me tell you yeah. who I am. And you're like, well, no, no, I, I don't know, bro. I, 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 I'm <laughs> I like, watch what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so it's like, it's, it's, yeah. that's, that is, a, that is just a good advice just in general because it's like, right. It's no matter what you're doing, you got to think about it. even if it, it, take it to sports, you know, you you make it to the league, you know, you may think oh, I'm, I'm getting on this team or, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to just do I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to make sure that I don't get off this team. And it's like, no, you did it to get to this point. Exactly. So you are here for a reason that yeah. somebody saw something and said, we need you. Yeah, and, exactly. So, you know, be comfortable with that. So exactly. Like, yes. And that's what that's what that, that's with anything you get. Yeah. No matter how big, no matter how small, you got to celebrate the fact that you did that. You know what I mean? Any creative, whether it's in music, whether it's in, whether it's with sports, yeah. you did, especially with it when it's with sports. You know how many people are good at sports yeah. on this continent? You know how many people are crazy good yeah. running for two hours a day? I can't run for 10 minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some people that are so good at what they're doing and you were chosen to be in the position, in the position that you're in. It's like that in itself. It's also good to keep that energy though, because that's that kind of keeps you hungry. It keeps you th like thriving to do more and stuff like that. But exactly, exactly, exactly. So you did say um, that you also are into anime, which that I didn't know because I couldn't find. One hundred percent. Which uh, what what anime? Like I guess what animes are your animes? Like with the ones that you are into. Right now, the best show, I think, oh, you know what? I was about to say something that isn't completely true. I was going to say the best show I think I ever watched was Attack on Titan. And Attack on Titan is, I think Attack on Titan is one of the most well-written shows, anime or not. I don't care what you're comparing it to. That is one of the most well-written pieces of content I think I've ever watched. And I'm trying to get my girl to watch it. I'm trying to get everybody to watch it because... If once you get over, and there's a lot of, and for people that don't watch anime, it's like, it's getting over the cartoon aspect of it. And it's getting over the, the typical anime tropes, like the weird jokes. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Once you get, once you get through that and you can actually see the story, mm -hmm. Attack on Titan is one of the most brilliant things. But My Hero Academia, yep. Boku no Hero has my soul right now. <laughs> I don't think I've ever cried so much watching a fucking cart. I don't know if I can cuss. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> I probably shouldn't cuss. Can't. Okay, cool. I don't think I've ever cried so much watching a uh, uh, a fracking <laughs> a little thing from the Flash. Watching a fracking cartoon in my life. And so, I, I, right now, I'll say that My Hero Academia is number one. Uh, Attack on Titan is a very, very, very close number two. Um, but the show that's legendary for me, and the show that got me into anime, was Naruto. All day, I will. I will rewatch Naruto to the day I die. Yep. <laughs> um, I tell people all the time because you know the so the big battle is always between Naruto and Dragon Ball Z. So yep. Dragon Ball Z is my number one. However, I word tell, I tell people all the time <clears throat> I said Naruto is the more emotional one to get you. Like, there's no emotion really in Dragon Ball Z. It's just pure. It's just good fights. Good fights. It's just good fights. <laughs> but Naruto, like, like it's, it, it's literally you know what I'm saying. Is somebody cutting onions around here? Because uh, yeah, trust me. <laughs> And the music when the bro. music hit, man, bro, <laughs> bro like, I'm telling you. Like, and then there's moments, there's moments that happen that like super hype you up, and like the way they built that story is so good. Like when Madara came back, man, like that that changed so the I, whole. Well, the, for the longest, you didn't like you thought that you like you you was you was, didn't know who Madara was because it was like exactly because oh boy was like he was he kept on like he was like it's oh, a man. legend. And it was like it was so much that happened in that show. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I would literally just talk talk about it on my podcast. I said pain. That was the most stressful moment. It like you <laughs> pain. I was like, man, yeah. like, what, like, bro, what is going on? Like, oh, trust me, like, trust me. Also, one of the best written characters ever. Yeah. Pain. Oh. Like that. That is that is one of those situations where it's like you 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 relate to the villain more than you relate to the the protagonist because yeah. everything he was saying was straight facts it's like i get it 
destroy the village. I understand, bro. Well, I get it. That's the thing. They, first, they make you hate him because what he did to Jariah. So you yeah. hate him at first. And then when the big thing of the village, he's like, oh, I don't want to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the reaction. It's like, ah, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reaction. It's like, why do I like this guy, bro? Right. <laughs> it was yeah, so yeah. stressful watching that yeah. that battle and that fight. Like, oh my god, bro. But you yeah, know what's funny? Yeah. We we talk about it on on the podcast a lot. One of the things about like, so anime is always going to give you some fan service. Like, it's yeah. you can't always. get. Out of it. But we said the reason why it's always bad is because when somebody <laughs> who when somebody who's not. Like, let's say you watch an anime right now, right? Yeah. You're trying to get your girl into it. So she's not yeah. watching it, right? So you're yeah. watching it, and then, like, it's this big battle. So it's a lot going on. So yeah. then when the chief finally comes in, and be like, what you watching? And then it's the fan service scene. You're like, wait, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 you got to go back. Wait, 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 let me rewind. Let me and so <laughs> we said the reason why is because when they're in the other room, they're hearing the battle. So they're battle, like, yeah. what's going on? So when they yeah. finally get up to say, well, let me see what he watching. And then it's the wrong And then, and then it's some, yeah, the wrong scene. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, somebody bending over or right. something crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, it's somewhere. <laughs> yeah, always, always. always. There's been always. so many moments, especially in My Hero Academia. <laughs> with, uh, I forgot his name, the kid with the balls on his yeah, head. Yeah. Always oh, just being a yeah. perv. Yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah, every time, every time he's on the screen doing some creepy something, that's when my girl walks. He's like, "What are you watching? Like, right. what is? This? <laughs> you, know, you, you missed this whole dialogue. You exactly. Like, yeah, he's he like, why are you crying watching this dude like try to squeak? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, no, no, babe, it's a scene before. I swear. Right. <laughs> that's the same thing with like yeah. Seven Deadly Sins. Seven Deadly Sins is such a good anime. Yeah. <laughs> Creep. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You missed the work. <laughs> Like he's <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the end. It's supposed to be the light thing after the dark thing. This is why they're no, you just <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, I love I love I love that stuff, man. Yeah, um, <laughs> before right literally right before our interview, I was just interviewing uh King Vader. I don't know if you're familiar with him. King Vader, that sounds mad familiar. He does like the hood Naruto videos and everything. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We was, and that's what we was talking about. I was like, the one thing that I love in today's world right now, and which is extremely excited that now, like I said, I, we learned that about you because, and one of the reasons why I created this platform, because you got to think, when you're on your promo run, for the most part, you're going to be talking about like your acting, you're going to be talking about the flash, but like 100%. a lot of people don't, probably don't even know. Like, like I, this is my first time knowing that you were into anime. I didn't yeah. have any other platform to talking about that. Yeah. And I wanted that. I was like, I want to give that platform for people that where they can geek out about stuff like All this. Day. And passion. And I said, and bro, that people let me just, not to, not to cut you off, I apologize, <laughs> but like, just to give you your shout out, I, like I was saying when we started, like, what you're doing is brilliant. Because especially, especially as black people, bro, because we're not allowed, like, I'm not going to say we're not allowed to be nerds, but growing up, it was not a thing, bro. Like, you, 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 like I said, you go to school and you cool and you got your hat backwards and, you know, you, you got your hip hop bumping and blah, 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 blah. And then you go home and you watch Dragon Ball Z. Right. You know what I mean? And you don't talk about it. And you, and you right. watch your Naruto and you don't talk about it. Or you play Final Fantasy and you don't right. go to school and talk about it. You know what I mean? And and it's it's there's been an awakening in black geekdom is what I'll call it that I think is so refreshing and so incredible and like I'm a grown ass man now but here I am still watching all these shows and it's cool you know what I mean and like there's and there's guys like you and guys like my brothers and blah 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 who we all just geek out about Naruto and about how we cry to Boku no Hero and right. you know what I mean and we're saying words like Boku no Hero right. without any shame like you know what I mean <laughs> you know what's funny I, I think what's also makes it like what, what what may change the ties is that there were people that you that got the cool like that you deem cool but yeah. are also talking about it like it was huge when Michael B. Jordan said I love Bro, you revolutionized like, like, and, it, <laughs> and it was it, it was literally like people like wait what like there's people that was confused about it, but it was yeah. like us like, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm looking through my Facebook at everybody that ever made fun of him. I'm like, see? Yep. see, it's not it's not weird. 
like, like, like all, all you ladies who lust after Michael B. Yeah, Jordan, yeah, yeah. I don't no. Naruto too. Now y'all no. talking about Naruto. It's Naruto, not this, not that. Say it right. You know, right. <laughs> they're talking about Dragon Ball Z. I'm like, you don't know Goku. Right. Nah, Gotta nah. join the train now. Yeah. <laughs> you, you ain't, ain't seen it when he when, when he did when he was a super saying he was just yeah you, you know, like, in. like you didn't see that you, you weren't there for the four episodes it took for him to go super saying that first right. time <laughs> him right. screaming for four episodes straight the he wasn't screen. there for that you don't know about that, you don't know about that. <laughs> yeah right. man well one of the last things that we do is we do what we call a recommendation so it could be something that you're reading you're watching you're listening to mm. something that you think that our our viewers, our listeners should dive into into or check out. Okay. Um, I feel like there's a few things I can say. Number one, there's, oh my God, I don't remember the the author right now. His name is slipping me, but there's a book I'm reading called The Prophet. Um, And it's a very dense book. It's a small book, but it's very dense. Um, And it's one of those books where you got to read the page a few times before you move to the next. Okay. because it's a book of just straight lessons. It's basically about a dude who's leaving his town and the town's folk are asking him advice because he's never going to come back type of thing. And it's advice that he's gotten from God. I think that's what it is. Is, um, it, is, it, is it by uh, Khalil Gibran? Yes, yes, yes. And it's, it's, I haven't finished the book yet. The book is maybe, I don't even think it's 100 pages, but I haven't finished it yet because you got to take your time when you read it. And it's just... It's so many lessons and it's not written in like contemporary English. It's written very metaphorically, very poetically, which makes it also difficult to read, which is why, but there's no way to talk about the things that he's talking about and really nailing, <clears throat> hitting the nail on the head without speaking in metaphor. Okay. You know what I mean? So um, I'd recommend that. And I'd recommend everybody just listen to a little more jazz in their life. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to this one guy right now named uh, Ashley Henry. I think he's from the UK. I haven't done much research on him, but his music is knocking me out. And I'm a big jazz guy. I just bought a saxophone like two days ago to get back into it. And I think, and that's my kick right now. That's the thing that I would, maybe it's just because I'm on a spiritual right. quarantine kick right now that all this stuff is hitting me in very different ways. Check out your Miles Davis. Make sure you know him. Um, there's also a dude named Yusuf Kamal, I think who's also out of the UK who, you know, just these jazz brothers who are really, really, really doing big things. So those are my recommendations, food for the soul. You know what's dope is that I've been doing, so I started this March of, uh, in March of last year during the quarantine. That's when I started this interview series that I've been doing, right? Right. Um, and almost, <laughs> I would say probably maybe 95% of the black people that I, um, that I interview recommended books. And for me, I think that that is just so dope because it's powerful. Right. It's it, it's like it, it's like a statement that it's saying because it's like, mm-hmm. you know, they, like uh, people often say things like, oh, you know, we don't read often. But I'm just like, that ain't true, man. Creative. They're they're recommending books, and I said mm-hmm. that is so dope to me. And I was like, yeah. like it kind of it continues on that trend. Like I like I think that is that is super duper dope, man. Dope, dope. Yeah, I so, think that's so powerful. Where can my people find you, man? You can find me on Instagram. I'm not super on the Twitter, but you can find me on Instagram at Mr. McKnight. Um, that's kind of the only thing you can find me on The Flash, March 2nd. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the only social that I'm doing right now. Oh, hey, I'm thinking of starting up with this Twitch channel because I also play a lot of video games. So I'm right hopefully now. within... I'm playing right now. I'm playing uh, Ghost of Tsushima, which Love is knocking it. me out. Yeah. I haven't I haven't dived and lost myself in the game like that in a minute. I'm also playing Call of Duty, which is why I'm think I'm gonna start to switch. I'm really bad at it. <laughs> um but that's why I think the Twitch will be fun. Just see me fail terribly playing that game. Um I'm also halfway I don't even know if I'm halfway through, but I'm kinda sorta off and on playing Breath of the Wild. That's just that's a huge game. <laughs> and I do want to get back to it. Um but yeah, that's what I'm playing right now. Dope, dope, dope. You know yeah, what? Yeah. Is, like when I was when I because I I try to make sure I do a good enough of research, and I was going on yeah. a lot of the Instagram, and then literally today I was like, "Is this his Twitter?" And I was like, "And I was going on it." <laughs> you know what? I did, and I was like, "Okay, this is his Twitter," because it was like I can tell. I did mean to ask you. So the Blair Witch really scared you? 
Bro, the Blair Witch, bro, when I watched the Blair Witch, the first time, because I've heard about the Blair Witch so much, and I was never, okay, when I watched the Blair Witch was at the very beginning, because horror movies are my favorite genre of movies to watch. Okay. That's now. Right. But when when I was younger, the only reason why the first horror movie I ever watched was a movie called uh, Exorcism of Emily Rose. And I only watched that because this girl that I really liked wanted to go to the movies and watch it. And I didn't want to be a punk. And I was like, I'm going to watch that. Yeah, sure. And it, <laughs> yeah, and it messed me up so bad that like my scare, like my level of what scares me just disappeared for like a while. And then when I started to gain that back, I was like, okay, you know what? I've been hearing all this about Blair Witch. Let me watch it. I watched it by myself late at night for whatever reason. And this is, I wasn't used to the whole found footage thing. And I thought it was real. <laughs> when I watched it, I thought it was real. Yeah. Person. And I watched it and I was like, I'm not going to bed. I'm staying up for like a couple of days because this is, <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> it, it messed me up. The only reason why it didn't get me, this is where I put like, I was like, okay. With scary movies, I'm like, okay, what's the likelihood of me being in this scenario? And I was yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, I hear that. I'm not gonna like, be in the woods. <laughs> I'm not gonna like, be doing this. So I, was like, I'm I'm gonna... like, I was like, but no, what if the if, you know what? If they what they should have did, they should have lived with it and not do interview because that's what killed it. Is that yeah, yeah? Everybody thought exactly. it was real until the, you start mm -hmm. seeing. That people in the movie do interviews. It was like, oh, yeah, nah. was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we all thought it was real, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, and how long and how long it took for sh things to like really happen? Yeah. And and oh man, it was just I was on edge the entire time. That movie messed me up for a while. Man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, man. Again, appreciate you, man. Again, this is hey, it was a pleasure. That playing hip hop culture and geek culture. I've been your boy Deuces. This has been Brandon McKnight, aka Chester P. Ron, and we are out. Out. You you like that video, man? Thank you for watching. We truly appreciate it. We got so many more videos on our page, so make sure you check them out over here. Hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell so that way you can always be notified anytime we release a new video. You already know how Geeks get down. We got so much coming for y'all, man. Check it out. Stay in tune.